This is question 7, May, June uh, 2013, uh, S2 paper, and the problem involves hypothesis testing. So they tell us in the problem, we need to read the question carefully, uh, Leila suspects that a particular six-sided die is biased so that the probability P that it will show a six is greater than 1 over 6. And she tests the die by throwing it five times. So if it shows a six on three or more throws, she will conclude that it's biased. So from that bit of information, uh, we want to pick out a few things. First, let's go ahead and talk about our null hypothesis, H0, will be P equals to 1 over 6. And because um, she suspects that it's biased, so we're going to test against uh, H1, P is bigger than 1 over 6. Okay. So she's going to throw it five times. So I've written some information here. Okay, we're going to uh, roll the die five times, so n equals to five. And if it shows a six on three or more throws, uh, she will conclude that it's biased. That means uh, she will reject the null hypothesis uh, when she when she gets three or more sixes. So this will define our rejection region. Yeah. I have drawn a picture here. Uh, this little number line, we start from 0 to 5 because we are throwing 5 times. So the rejection region is for x bigger than or equals to 3. Remember, we are dealing with a binomial experiment. So x talks about the number of successes in a certain number of throws. So let's come back to the question. Again, uh, I've defined you the rejection region. So uh, you have to follow this picture kind of carefully. Okay. So the question has a few parts. First, we are asked to state what is meant by a type 1 error. So uh, a type 1 error, careful when you answer this in the exam, a type 1 error, if you ask to explain it, it's not a probability. A type 1 error is an error. So it's an error that happens when you reject H0 when it is true. So in our case, they ask you to um, explain the type 1 error in this situation. So basically, you're going to conclude, in our case here, you're going to conclude that it is biased when, in fact, it is not. Okay. So you're going to conclude that it's biased uh, when actually it is not. Okay, great. And then they ask you the same part to calculate the probability of a type 1 error. So let me leave my sheet of paper then. We are going to work out the probability of a type 1 error. So the probability of type 1 error, let's write it out properly, probability of rejecting H0 when H0 is true. This T stands for true. Okay? And this R stands for reject. So if your H0 is true, let's define a binomial random variable. X in this case will be binomial. And we are rolling the die five times. And because H0 is true, we are dealing with 1 over 6. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to reject it. So the rejection region is X bigger than or equals to 3. So we're going to work out the probability of x bigger than or equals to 3. So which means this will be probability of x equals to 3 plus probability of x equals to 4 plus probability of x equals to 5. Not difficult, yeah? Once you arrive at this probability statement, this is called a probability statement, by using the formula, I've written the formula right on top, the binomial formula. So just plug it in. So we have got uh, 5c3, 1 over 6 to the power of 3, and I have uh, 5 over 6 to the power of 2 plus 5c4, 1 over 6 to the power of 4, and 5 over 6 to the power of 1, let's write it, plus the last one will be 5c5, 
1 over 6 to the power of 5 and 5 over 6 to the power of 0. So I've written all the terms out for completeness. Uh, all you have to do is use your calculator and I worked it out. Uh, when you do that, you'll get an answer of 0 0.0355. Okay, use your calculator and you work it out, you'll get 0 0.0355. Great. Now we're done with the uh, probability of a type 1 error. Uh, you get three points for that. You are asked to go on to part 2, assuming that the value of P is actually 2 over 3. You're asked to calculate the probability of a type 2 error. So, now we can erase this. Okay, we're going to work out the probability of a type 2 error. So, a type 2 error happens when you accept H0 and H0 is false. So, they tell you now the value of P is actually 2 over 3. Let me check that again. Yes, 2 over 3. So, how do you accept H0? You'll accept H0 when the probability of X is less than or equals to 2. That is from where? From this picture. This is the acceptance region. So, let me write it here again. Okay, follow very carefully. The probability of a type 2 error okay, will be equals to the probability of accepting H0 when H0 is false. So, I'm going to erase this in a minute just to define for you what the probability of a type 2 error, this is how we're going to work it. So, now that we have uh, written our probability statement, I can erase this. So, all we have to do is work out the probability of x less than or equals to 2. Just be careful. Uh, this is probability of x equals to 0 plus probability of x equals to 1 plus probability of x equals to 2. So, same binomial formula, except what? P now is 2 over 3. So, you have to work out, yeah, we have got 5C is 0, 2 over 3 to the power of 0, 1 over 3 to the power of 5, plus 5C, 5 1, 2 over 3 raised to the power of 1, 1 over 3 raised to the power of 0, excuse me, 1 over 3 raised to the power of 4, plus 5C, 5 2, 2 over 3 raised to the power of 2, and 1 over 3 raised to the power of 3. Now all you have to do is uh, use a calculator and I have done, done it for you and if you use a calculator you will get 0 0.210 okay and we're done. So uh, what is uh, what you need to be careful about here uh, use your calculator and uh, don't make mistakes when you plug in the numbers and it should be straightforward yeah Okay, the last part of the problem, let me read it. Um, Layla now throws the die 80 times and it shows a 6 on 50 throws. So, let me erase this. We don't need this anymore. So, she throws the die 80 times. N equals to 80. And it shows a 6 on 50 throws. So, let's call PS, this is the sample proportion. Okay, let me write it again. Okay, this is the sample proportion yeah, of successes. And that will be equals to 50 over 80. Okay, so again, she is uh, throwing the die 80 times and it shows a 6 on 50 throws. You are asked to calculate an approximate 96% confidence interval for the population proportion. So, we have the value for the uh, sample proportion which is uh, 50 over 80. You can use a calculator and get 0 0.625. Once you're done with this, we are going to use a, let me write down first. We are looking for a 96% confidence interval for the population proportion. And we have the sample proportion here. And then we are going to use a formula which is found in uh, most textbooks in statistics. We will have PS uh, plus or minus Z alpha over 2. And we have a square root PS QS over 
n. A simple formula that you can easily find in any statistics textbook. The value of z here, uh, I've drawn the normal curve, the top right hand corner. The value of z is uh, 2.055. Uh, that's because we're looking for the 96% ci. So read the number carefully of your normal tables. And then uh, just plug in the numbers. Just remember that your qs will be equals to 1 minus ps. So we can write 0.625 plus or minus uh, 2.055. Uh, let me write the numbers down that I've copied here. I have uh, 0 0.625. 1 minus that, we'll have uh, 0 0.375. And how many times do we throw it? 80 times. And we are almost done. So when you use your calculator on these numbers, you will get uh, 0 0.625 plus or minus 0 0.111. Great. So uh, to finally write down the answer, first take uh, 0 0.625 minus 0 0.111, you will get 0 0.514. And if you take 0 0.625 plus 0 0.111, you will get 0 0.736. So you have your lower confidence limit and your upper confidence limit and we are done.